opportunity to thank the Dallas City Council, Chief Pungle, Lieutenant Hale, Sergeant Childs, Class Coordinator, Sergeant Brooks, Senior Corporal <laughs> Brooks, Class Advisor, Senior Corporal Pedraza, <coughs> DT and PT Instructor, Senior Corporal Mata, the entire Academy staff. I would also like to thank the family and friends of Class 318 who sacrificed and endured the past 34 weeks. Without them, none of this would have been possible. On August 19, 2009, as 42 individuals with 42 distinct personalities, my classmates and I began a 34-week journey. During our journey, we realized that there was only one true way to reach our goal. That way was, and still is, best described in our class model. We came divided, we leave united. We stand here now before our family, friends, fellow officers, and citizens of, the Dal of Dallas to announce that we have reached our goal. We are Dallas Bullies. To get to where we are today, there were several days we will remember forever. Firearms training, where our class was recognized for firearms excellence, PVOC, also known as Police Vehicle Operations, because where else can you get paid to drive someone else's car as fast as you can the entire time you're in it? <laughs> Reality-based training with simunitions, where you get to shoot your classmates with paint pellets for all the old man jokes you receive in these three or four days. <laughs> Mobile Field Force was definitely a day to remember. I believe our class will always remember that day. <laughs> Although it took two days to get my voice back after all the yelling and screaming. Just as there are great days that we will remember forever, there are some other days I'm sure we'll hope to someday forget, but probably never will. First, there was breakout day, which was fun for everyone, unless you were a recruit. <laughs> then there was OC day, where to begin? Also known as surviving being pepper sprayed by your, in the face by your friend while being yelled at by the DT and PT staff. I think our eyes are still burning from that day and will probably continue. Next, there was Taser Day, which was extremely stimulating and a memorable moment for, <laughs> for everyone. So you're hopeful for all included. <laughs> And I'd like to take a moment to thank uh, Senior Corporal Mata once again for his input and enthusiasm on where exactly several of us should be shot with the taser. <laughs> 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 Lastly, Red Man was fun for most of us, and we'll just call it a learning experience. <laughs> I strongly urge everyone to ask classmates and instructors about all the wonderful experiences and training we've received and endured. So we can have an opportunity to fill in the blanks where, where there may have been some things left out of the original story, like the truth. <laughs> Maybe a scream here or there, or at times some slight disorientation. We'll probably go easy on each other as we have for the past 34 weeks. Who am I kidding? We'll tell each other's families and friends all the brutal and embarrassing details, but all in good fun. <coughs> in all sincerity, after all the blood, sweat, and sometimes tears dried, our class grew together as a whole, both mentally and physically. To the DTPT staff, Sergeant Hidden, C. Corporal Mata, Senior Corporal Perry, <coughs> Senior Corporal Atkinson, Senior Corporal Evenden, Senior Corporal Fox, Senior Corporal Lavender, RBT staff, Sergeant Transu, Senior Corporal Hicks, Senior Corporal Coffey, Firearms Training staff, led by Sergeant Stafford, the PBOC staff, led by Senior Corporal Navarro, the Mobile Field Force staff, led by Sergeant Stafford, or Sergeant Bristol, Mr. Gene Hagen, for all his academic uh, guidance, our class coordinator, Senior Corporal Brooks, Class Advisor, Senior Corporal Pedraza, and all the adjunct instructors and professionals that helped us get to where we are today. From Class 318, thank you. Thank you.
you for your hard work. Thank you for your dedication. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your inspiring one-liners. And thank you for getting us ready for the real world. I would like to take this opportunity to read a short piece written by an unknown author. Having prior law enforcement experience, I think it best describes the mental, physical, and emotional expectations of a police officer. When God created peace officers, when the Lord was creating peace officers, he was into a sixth day of overtime when an angel appeared and said, you're doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And the Lord said, have you read the specs on this order? A peace officer has to be able to run five miles through an alley in the dark, scale walls, enter homes the health inspector wouldn't touch, and not wrinkle his uniform. He has to be able to sit in an undercover car all day on a stakeout, cover a homicide scene that night, canvas the neighborhood for witnesses, and testify in court the next day. He has to be in top physical condition at all times, running on black coffee and half-eaten meals. And he has to have six pair of hands. The angel shook her head slowly and said, six pair of hands? No way. It's not the hands that are causing me the problems, said the Lord. It's the three pair of eyes an officer has to have. That's on the standard model, asked the angel. The Lord nodded. One pair that sees through a bulge in a pocket before he asks, may I see what's inside there, sir? When he already knows and wishes he'd taken that accounting job. Another pair, here in the side of his head for his partner's safety. And another pair of eyes in the front that can look reassuringly at a bleeding victim and say, you'll be all right, ma'am, when he knows it is so. Lord, said the angel, touching his sleeve, rest and work on this tomorrow. I can't, said the Lord. I already have a model that can top a 250-pound drone into a patrol car without incident and feed a family of five on a civil service paycheck. The angel circled the model of the peace officer very slowly. Can it think, she asked. You bet, said the Lord. It can tell you, tell you the elements of a hundred crimes, recite Miranda warnings in its sleep, detain, investigate, search, and arrest a gang member on the street in less time than it takes five learned judges to debate the legality of the stop and still keep a sense of humor. This officer also has phenomenal personal control. He can deal with crime scenes painted in hell, coax a confession from a child abuser, comfort a murder victim's family, and then read in the daily paper how law enforcement isn't sensitive to the rights of criminal suspects. Finally, the angel bent over and ran her finger across the cheek of the peace officer. There's a leak, she pronounced. I told you that you're trying to put too much into this model. That's not a leak, said the Lord. It's a tear. What's the tear for, asked the angel. It's for bottled up emotions, for fallen comrades, for commitment to that funny piece of cloth about the American flag, for justice. You're a genius, said the angel. The Lord looked somber. I didn't put it there, he said. In closing, to all my classmates, thank you for nominating me as your class leader, and I hope I met all your expectations. It's been a true honor, and I hope all of you have long and successful careers. Thank you.